In today's video, I want to take a look at what is a race condition. So we left off at simply creating two threads. And of course, we waited for them to finish the execution. All I did was just remove everything in the routine function because I want to change it so that we would uh, encounter this uh, race condition. Now, to get to it, let's say we have a sort of mailbox and we just have a few listeners that all they do is uh, just increment the number of mails, right? So let's say we have two listeners represented by the two threads and they just listen for mails from all across uh, the globe. And uh, so we have here a variable that represents the number of mails. And inside the function, we're just going to simulate basically adding mails to the mailbox, which is going to be a simple increment, right? So mails plus plus. Okay. And at the end of all this, so once we've done listening, once the threads finished their execution, I want to just uh, print out the values. I'm going to say here, printf percent D backslash N and then uh, mails. And also, I guess I should say number of mails. Okay, so notice that this printf is right after both the thread joins. So we know that after the threads have finished their execution, we are printing this number. So nothing else can, can happen uh, while this is running, while this print is running. So if you launch this, of course, we would get the expected result of what? Of just two, because, well, males was zero and we had two threads that both incremented this Mails value. And as I said in the previous video, the memory is shared across all threads. So of course we got two because one of them incremented the value from zero to one and the other one incremented the value from one to two. So that's fine. Now what happens if we, for example, increment it multiple times in the same thread? So let's say we have here a for loop for int, int i equals zero, i less than, let's say a hundred, i plus plus. And I'm going to just and that, what's the expected value? Well, since each thread is going to incre increment this mails variable a hundred times, we should get just a hundred times two, times the number of threads. So let's see if that's correct. If we launch this, we get 200. So that's, that's to be expected. It works nicely. We have no issues here. Now, let's increase the number of iterations. Let's go further. How about instead of a hundred, let's say a hundred thousand, let's say our mailbox is just ravaged with mails and we have a lot to uh, read. If I launch this, all right, we get the expected number 200,000. So that's, that's very nice. That's uh, to be expected. Now, what if we increase this number even further? Right? So we get instead of just a hundred thousand, uh, increments, what if we go to 1 million, for example, save and launch. Oh, hold on a second. Why weren't we supposed to get 2 million since, you know, we had one thread incremented it a million times and the other thread incremented it another million times. So it should be 1 million plus 1 million is 2 million, right? But what, what's going on here? We, we got a very different number. It's not even uh, divisible by a million or something. So it's not like a thread didn't get created. It's just 1,411,192. That, my friends, is called a race condition. Now, to understand what happened here, first we have to go over this operation that we did here, right? Incrementing this variable. What, like behind the scenes, what's actually happening? Well, what you have to do to increment a variable. First, I guess, simple. The first step would be to read the value. So read the value in mails, right? And then you, I guess you increment it. So you know the value is something like, let's say five and you have to increment it. So you add one to it. So you increment the value and then you write it back to memory. So you write mails. Those are the three operations that are being done to increment this variable. Now, this is all fine if we are working with just one thread as we did uh, so far, right? But as soon as we introduce multiple threads, 
we only have two here, something very strange could happen. So here's a little table with the operations. The column represents a thread, so a line of execution, and the line represents the actual operation. So reading mails could result in a certain value, right? So uh, we assumed that first the thread one is incrementing. So suppose thread one reads the value from mails and says, okay, well, it's something like uh, 23. Cool, fine. Okay, and it increments it. That's not gonna change the value from the variable. It just increments it locally in, its, in the CPU itself. And then it writes it to the mails variable. So the mails variable becomes 24. Amazing, so that's great. Now, what happens in thread two? If, if this write mails operation finished, then thread two is gonna say, oh, okay, so we have 24 here. We still have 24, we didn't change it. And then we write and it's 25. And each thread incremented the mails variable once. That's to be expected. So we went from 23 to 25, amazing. Now let's look at a different scenario. If for example, both of the threads are executing all three operations at the same time. So we have first T1 reads mail. So it reads, again, let's say it reads 23. And then T2 also reads 23. Okay. And then for some reason, thread two stops. It just stays there. The, 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 the operating system says, okay, wait, take a break. Uh, we have to le let uh, T1 do its thing, okay? And T1 does its thing, just says, okay, 23 and increment, and it gets to 24, okay, amazing. And and suppose T2 is still on, on pause, but T1 still executes. So it, it goes on and, uh, well, reads not 23 this time, it reads 24, because it did increment it previously. Then it goes, okay, 24, then 24 doesn't really change the value, then 25, T2 is still paused and okay, that's that's amazing. So it incremented it again. And suppose let's say we even got to 30 at some point. So we got 29 and then 29 and then 30 inside the memory. And only after those, what was it? Seven iterations, thread two starts, uh, starts again. It's like the, the operating system is like, oh, dude, you can start executing finally again. Okay, so it's like, well, what do we have here? We have 23. It's not gonna execute the <laughs> read mails command again. No, 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 no. It's gonna look at what it has inside its uh, CPU register this time, not inside its memory. It says, okay, 23, and then 23 is, uh, well, incremented, the value is still, the value inside, actually inside the variable is now 30, because this guy changed it to 30, but then this guy comes in and says, oh, okay, well, I'm going to write two mails. And uh, what am I going to write? Well, I'm going to write 23 plus one. So I'm going to write 24. And all of a sudden, we went from 30 back down to 40, uh, to 24. And this is an issue. This is an issue because it uh, no longer guarantees that we have correct results whenever we do a write operation in multiple threads like this. You see, uh, we have missed quite a few in the, in the terminal here. We have missed like 25% of the increments because of that. That is a really, really big issue. And that's what's called a race condition. Now you might say, okay, well, isn't this like just one line of code really? It's not all these operations behind the scenes, is it? Uh, we can take a look at the assembly. So to do that, there's a simple command that you can use. So I can say here gcc-s to compile into assembly here. And if I go ahead and compile this, and get the assembly out of it, the actual assembly code that is going to be ran on my CPU. If we go to, I think it's main.s, there we go. This is what spits out. And don't look too much into it. The main, the main uh, and most important thing here is the routine. So this is our actual routine function. And here is the line where we increment the mails variable. 
right? As you can see, L stands from actually line three, and we have four uh, four lines in assembly that this Mayors plus plus translates to, and they do actually correspond to what I was talking about. That first one, it it takes in basically from the memory. Mov L stands for moving, and it takes in from the memory. It moves it to E A X. That is a CPU register. So that's the uh, CPU's memory, and then what it does is it adds one to this whatever value that we got, and of course it moves the value from here. It moves it back to where it belongs. Right. So these three operations are what uh, consist of this uh, mails plus plus operation. Now this is just reading, incrementing, and then writing. And because these uh, operations could interleave between uh, executing threads, we could get race conditions. Now one last thing about the race conditions here you might ask why did it happen only when we had here 1 million iterations? Why did it happen only at 1 million and why not at 100 or 10? Well, that's simply because if you only have like 11 iterations, well, you're going to create the thread and all these 100 iterations are going to be finished by the time you actually create the second thread. So you don't have anything interleaving, you're just executing the first thread it finishes execution before the creation of the second thread, and then the second thread comes along and executes its own, and th there's no problem there. But this cannot be guaranteed, as you can see here. If we add a big enough number, we're gonna have issues. And even then, even if we have um, only 100 iterations, it could just so happen that that thread, when it starts, is paused right there, and then the second thread gets created and we still get a race condition. It's just that the chance of that happening is much lower. But in computer science, it's incredibly important that our data is exact. And we cannot have that risk that, oh, uh, even though it's like a 0.001% that our data is uh, bad, is corrupt, is not right, we cannot have that especially when working into a financial environment or something like that. In any environment, really, you cannot have that. All right, thank you guys so much for watching. In the next video, we're going to take a look at how to solve this issue. And if you do have any questions, leave them down in the comments below or on our Discord server. You'll have the source code posted on our website. Again, link in the description below. Take care. Bye.